All right. Thank you again for joining us this evening for Strategies for Spring Registration. You may recognize us from the New Spider webinar series this summer. We're back. I'm Nicole Marantonio, the Director of Advising and the First Year Seminar Program. And I'm joined by Andrea Vess, the Assistant Director of Advising. Welcome. Our goal this evening is to provide you with an overview of the registration process for spring semester, since this will be a bit different from the process you undertook this summer. We'll also be providing you with some key dates and deadlines, as well as strategies, as the title of this webinar suggests, for tackling registration. At the end of our session, we will demo each of the tips that we provide and also demo how to actually register. We will encourage you to post any questions that you have in the Q&A box. However, please note that we will not be answering those questions until the very end of the webinar. As I mentioned, we're also recording this webinar so that it'll be able to be posted online later for future reference. Finally, and we'll reiterate this at the end of this evening's webinar, if you have any questions that aren't answered tonight, um, we encourage you to reach out to your academic advisor, to us at advising at richmond.edu, or you can also feel free to reach out to either one or both of us directly, and we'll include our email addresses again at the end of this webinar. So to begin, the first thing that you need to know about spring registration is when to actually register. And so, as you likely know, continuing students register on a rotation schedule that is posted on the registrar's website. What we have here is the registration rotation for first year students. First year scholars, particularly Richmond scholars, Oliver Hill scholars, and Bonner scholars, as well as NCAA Division I athletes, will begin to register next Wednesday, a week from today, November 8th, starting at 3 p.m. The remaining members of the first year class will begin to register the following morning, Thursday, November 9th at 7 a.m. We will say as a first tip that every second counts when it comes to registration. So we strongly encourage you to be ready um, to register at your designated, the start of your designated registration time. So if you do happen to log in a bit late, if your registration time begins at 7 a.m., even as late as 7.30 or 8 o'clock, please know that you will need to recalibrate expectations with respect to available seats. Again, in this rotation, you'll see that there are more than one day. Um, there's more than one day allocated for first year registration. But again, this only means that you'll have this time period to make changes to your schedule only with other first year students. Again, if you wait later in the day on Thursday or until Friday to begin working on your spring schedule, there will be fewer available options in terms of seats. On Monday, November 13th at 7 a.m., open registration will begin. And this means that registration will reopen to students in all classes, so first years through seniors. You can definitely anticipate some registration movement at this time because students from all classes will begin to make changes to their schedules simultaneously. It is at this point also that wait lists will open um, for some classes. Um, we note here that wait lists administered by BannerWeb are not available on all classes. So you can tell if a course has a wait list administered through BannerWeb by checking its seating capacity. And again, this is something that we'll demonstrate to you later in this webinar. Beyond the basics of when you register, there are a few things that you need to know about this registration cycle. The first is that you must meet with your academic advisor before you'll be allowed to register. If you don't know who your academic advisor is, we encourage you to check Grad Tracker where their name is listed. And again, this is something that we will demonstrate shortly. We also strongly encourage you to create a plan and banner with just the classes that you want to register for. This is a noted departure from the process of the summer. So you will no longer be making plans with 20 plus, with a list of 20 plus courses. 
This is just a plan with the classes that you want to register for. The next thing that you must remember as you prepare for registration is that your academic advisor must mark you advised or clear your advising hold after your advising meeting. Currently, all students, first year through seniors, as you meet with your advisor, have a advising hold registration listed on your account. This will prevent you from being able to register. And this is something that can only be cleared by your academic advisor. So please make sure that that advising hold is cleared. Additionally, there are other holds that you may have on your account that may keep you from registering. There is an orientation hold, a student health hold, a wellness or a well requirement hold, and also a student accounts hold. So any of these holds will keep you from being able to register come registration day. So we strongly encourage you to check BannerWeb and specifically GradTracker to see if any of these holds are listed on your account. And again, once we get into the demonstration portion of this evening, um, we'll show you where you can find that. Fourth, you must register for a first year seminar course. So, it is required of all students to complete two FYSs, one in fall semester and one in spring semester. So you must indeed register for an FYS. And then finally, for students who are in the Endeavor program, your spring Endeavor course or courses, depending on your community, will be pre-registered for you. So these are courses which you should not include on your registration plan. In terms of the negotiables, or basically things that you should consider when it comes to strategies for registration, is to think about wellness, particularly Well 101. Unlike the fall semester, where Well 100 is a requirement of all incoming students, Well 101, which you'll see on Grad Tracker as a requirement for graduation, is a requirement you'll need to complete before the start of your junior year. It is not something you need to complete in spring semester of first year. If you do happen to see a Well 101 in which you could register, you're certainly welcome to do that, but it's not something that is required. Additionally, at this point um, in registration and in the process, you are permitted to register for 3.5 to five and a half units to be a full-time student. Um, remember that 3.5 units is required for full-time status and 5.5 units is the maximum number of units um, that a student can register for without the permission of a college dean. And then finally, something to remember, if you are an NCAA Division I athlete, your practice schedule will not be preloaded into BannerWeb for you. So it's important to know your practice and or game schedule in advance. Um, so this is something that you should certainly be keeping in mind as you think about the timing of courses that you plan to register for. So at this point, now we've covered some of the basics, we want to give it a try. So I'll be turning it over now to Andrea Vest to share the demonstration. Thank you, Dr. M. Okay, so as you log into Banner, click on the Student Services tab, and I want you to start first with Grad Tracker. Let's check on those holds. Let's see who our advisor is. And you'll also want to check Grad Tracker to map out what classes you'd like to take this semester. Check your gen eds. What do you need to, to, uh, to complete in the coming years? Maybe run a what if and um, pop in a major or a minor that you might be interested in. Get a sense for what classes you might be interested in taking. So here I am on the main page of Grad Tracker, and my advisor is listed here. I can see that my advisor is Court Schneider. And this is where I would check to see if I have any holes. For our test purposes, this particular student does not have any holds, so we should be able to register quite easily on registration one. To get to the planning page in Grad Tracker or in Banner, rather, 
I'm going to go to the student registration menu, student registration full service, and this should look familiar. Make sure that you start here in prepare for registration, just to make sure I've got all green, no holds, no messages waiting for me. And I don't know if this semester they're having everyone do the financial agreement like you did in the summer, but do check here to make sure that you don't need to sign that financial agreement. Again. So going back, I'm gonna build my plan. Like Dr. M said, I'm just gonna put the classes that I'm interested in. I've already reviewed my grad tracker. I know which classes I'd like to take, so I can just start building my plan. I'm gonna start with my first year seminar and build around that. I've chosen one that I found interesting. I can find the course description by clicking on the title and looking here at the bottom. I can also check the fys.richmond.edu website for course descriptions for FYS. A moment ago, Dr. M was talking about wait lists. If I wanted to see if a first year seminar was going to have a wait list, this is where I would look. And I can see here that there will be 10 wait list seats once these 16 seats fill up. So this is the first year seminar I've chosen. I'm gonna add it to my plan and we can see it start to build here on the calendar view as well as my list. Other classes I'm interested in this semester. Let's see, I haven't done my symbolic reasoning requirement yet, so I'm gonna take a look at calculus. You may remember from building your plan this summer that I need to view sections to actually find a class. I wanna make sure there's a CRN, the five digit identifier, as well as meeting times, I need all of this information just to make sure that this is a class that's happening in the spring. Um, so looking at these times, I think I like this 1030. Let's put that on my plan. The other thing I need to take is my science requirement. So I found Biology 120. Hmm. One thing to know here with all of our science classes, as far as the um, field of study is concerned, they will all have a lab. So when I'm looking at biology, I can see that it meets on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. This Monday is my lab. This is my lecture. If I were to choose a class in chemistry, I need to watch for the labs and the lectures separately. They are not linked like they are here in biology or physics or geography or environmental studies, okay? But since I've chosen biology, um, I think, and let me just double check my times because I don't want any conflicts on my plan. I like this 130, so I'll add that. And I decided that I also want to fulfill my visual and performing arts field of study. I looked earlier and I found this great dance class that should work really well for me. There's just this one section at noon, which is perfect, it does fit. So I'll add that. And I'll save my plan. This time around, you can name your plan whatever your heart desires. 
So I'm going to call mine Spring 24. I will save it. I will check it. I don't have any conflicts. I think this is a good plan for which to use during registration. So on registration morning, I will have set my alarm for 6.30. I will make sure my computer is open and warmed up and I've got a good Wi-Fi connection. I might even have my coffee next to me. And I'm gonna start here, register for classes. At the strike of seven, I'm gonna open the registration page. I can either register by searching, I can register by CRNs, or I can register by my plan, which is where I'm gonna start. Here's my plan. I'm gonna add all of these classes to my summary. I also like to think of that as my shopping cart. So I've added them all. I'm gonna submit them all. And I'm thrilled because they were all available. I am registered in all four of the classes that I wanted. Now, I've had a minute to think about this. And I'm kind of regretting that I don't get to have lunch on Mondays particularly. So what I think I'm gonna do at this point, I'm gonna go find a different visual and performing arts class. I can stay right here in the registration system. And because it's a gen ed, the most efficient way to search for those is by doing an advanced search with the attribute for the visual and performing arts. I'm going to search all the classes from around campus that fulfill that requirement. And I'm gonna see if maybe there is something in the morning just to free up my afternoon. I can avoid anything that shows a time conflict. Let's see. Perfect. This basics of acting at 9 a.m. fits the bill. I'm going to do that, but I'm going to swap my acting for my hip hop class. And I only want Banner to make this change if I can get into acting. I don't want to lose my spot in dance if for some reason I'm late to the last seat in acting. So I'm going to do this conditional add drop. I've got my pending basics of acting. I'm going to drop hip hop. And I'm going to click conditional add, which tells Banner only make this change if it works. Perfect. All right. I'm very happy with that now. I freed up my lunch. I got my acting. I let go of dance. But now after a little bit of reflection, I think I'd also like to take a history class because I think my Monday, Wednesday looks a little open. I found a history class on my backup list and I just wanna quick show you how to use your CRN to register for that backup. So the history class I'm interested in is this one. I plugged it in here. I'm going to add it to my shopping cart. And I'll submit that. Perfect. I have five units registered. I'm happy with that. I can just close out and maybe go back to bed. Let me stop sharing so Dr. M can get back in here. All right. And so just to recap. Now that we've seen Banner Web and given it a try, just to recap what we'd like to highlight for you is just as a few reminders. So first and foremost, be sure to check Grad Tracker. 
to make sure that you don't have any of those holds that we mentioned. And if you do, to be proactive and try to have those holds lifted before registration begins. Um, so this is a good opportunity if you do have a hold to reach out to the corresponding office to find out how you can work to, to get that hold removed. Now, Grad Tracker is also the place to find out and to see what requirements you still need to fulfill. As we mentioned, we do know that you all have the requirement of taking a first year seminar. But beyond that, you have a variety of general education requirements um, to complete over the time that you have at the university. So you may want to take a look and see which requirements you may look into fulfilling this spring, um, which courses you may want to pursue in a potential major, and really just as an opportunity to explore. So Grad Tracker is great to just get a, a sense of what remains and what possibilities you have. We also, again, encourage you to make at least one plan with just the classes that you want to take. So as we demoed, the plan included really four classes to begin with, that four units, um, which we use as kind of an average semester. Um, students can register for up to five and a half units um, and three and a half as a full-time student. We also strongly encourage you to have a list of backup classes ready in case your first choices are not available. So while we've just demoed the registration from a single plan, we do encourage you to have that list of CRN, so that five digit number that you might be able to plug in on the spot in the event that your first choice isn't, isn't doesn't have seats remaining for you. Also remember that there's still time so just because there isn't space in the moment when you register doesn't mean that there won't be later. Um, but we do encourage you to ensure that when registration begins um, and as you work on building your schedule, you do register for a full course load from the start. Um, you can certainly make changes after. Three, be sure to meet with your academic advisor. As we mentioned, they're the person who will work to help remove that advising hold from your account. And then the last few, of course, set your alarm clock. Make sure that you have some time before your registration time slot um, to log on to the computer, get ready. Again, have that cup of coffee if you need um, and be ready to go. Then registration begins, um, hopefully, and goes fairly smoothly um, and can be done in a matter of minutes, honestly. Um, but if it doesn't go immediately as you intended, please don't panic. Um, as we mentioned, there is movement, there's time, um, there are lots of really fantastic courses. And so if you aren't able to get into your first choice, sometimes that course that you wound up in just because it was another option or maybe it even just fit um, could be a really fantastic experience for you. So Again, don't panic. We recognize that registration can be stressful, but know that we are here to support you. Um, and if you do have questions, you shouldn't hesitate to be in touch, um, certainly with your academic advisor or with us um, as you undertake this next step in registration at the university. And once you get through the spring semester, you'll, you'll be quite familiar with the process moving on. So we encourage you to reach out with questions um, and good luck. As you mentioned, we did want to provide our email addresses and information. So again, reach out with questions. Um, but at this point, we did also want to open up the Q&A box for questions that we can address here um, that we'll hopefully be able to answer for all. And so with that, we're going to stop sharing our screen um, so that we can start ask, answering those questions. I'll take the first one while you're kind of situating yourself. Okay. Um, first question in the Q&A is open registration the phase when we can register for five and a half credits instead of 4.5. Yes. Um, you can register for up to 5.5 as soon as your registration block opens. So from the minute you can register, you can go up to 5.5. 
there's a follow-up a little further down I'm going to also answer. Um, can I add more than the maximum credits for the semester to a plan? You can. I mean, we did that over the summertime. We put 20 of them on our plan, but you will confuse Banner because it will stop you at 5.5 or 5 if it's closest. It won't go over 5.5. Um, so it will choose the first random five seats that don't conflict with each other. So it is not recommended to put more than you need on one plan. That's what your backup list is for. Anything extra, put on your backup plan. So following up, um, I see the question, what happens if you don't get a class that you want? Um, so I'm assuming that this is if you don't get a, your first choice um, class from your plan. Um, so as you mentioned, what we recommend is entering the registration process with a series of backups um, should you not get your first choice. Um, since we know particularly, I'll use first year seminar as an example, um, because all first year students will be registering within that span of a few days, there'll be a lot of pressure um, to get into those 16 seats per section. So it is possible that you may not get into your first choice. Um, I would definitely recommend having five um, to 10 FYSs um, on hand with those five digit CRNs as backups um, that you could again add in um, on the spot should you not be able to get a seat immediately. Um, we do recommend um, if you are interested in a course um, that you aren't able to enroll in immediately and it does have a wait list, so feel free to put yourself on a wait list um, as those particularly in the FYS case will move um, immediately um, as the as students are able to register. Um, so that's something to, to keep in mind, but do have some backups um, and your, your schedule will work out. There are two questions here about the wellness requirement that I can answer. Um, well 101 is optional. It's a graduation requirement that has to be completed before the start of your junior year. So you just need to factor that in sometime while you're here. Um, well 102 is a requirement that you will finish fall of sophomore year. Well 102 is an online module. You'll get all of the information you need to take care of it in an email next summer. So there are no wellness requirements in the spring semester of your first year. They are optional as far as well when it is concerned. Um, so just a quick question of what needs to be done um, by next Thursday. Um, so again, for students who are not part of the priority registration group, um, that you'll be registering Thursday morning starting at 7 a.m. And so we strongly recommend that you have a plan with the your first choice courses on it um, that you'll be using to register from. Um, and from there, make any changes, additions, again, should you not be able to enroll in your first choice um, and be ready um, at that point. We also encourage you to look toward the next few days too as courses, um, as enrollments move um, and as open registration begins, as there's further movement um, as students make changes to their schedules. But for Thursday, we do recommend that you enter that phase um, by creating a full schedule, even if it's not the ideal schedule that you began with. Right. Someone asked if I could show how to get to the actual registration again. I will do that before we close out. We'll get through these questions and then I can take take us back there. Um, another Well 102 question. Um, 102 is a graduation requirement. There are no units associated. It's much like Well 100 and Well 101. There, there are no credits associated with it, but it is a graduation requirement. So it does not count toward your 35 units that you need to graduate. 
Um, and then a follow-up wellness. What happens if you want to take Well 101 this semester, but there aren't any seats, which is possible because you have some upperclassmen ahead of you who do need to take it um, this semester. You will just put it off until next fall or next spring. One more wellness. <laughs> um, does Well 101 uh, some of the well one ones meet online. Some of them are in person. Um, the question here, there are also some in the summertime that are both in person and online. So there, there are a variety of well 101 options when you're ready to put that on your schedule. Okay, I see a question about Gen Ed. Um, about course petitions. Um, so that's something that would be handled by a separate committee um, if, if a course is not currently counting toward a general education requirement. So that's something that we could follow up with um, at a different time. Um, so if you wanna just, we could send an email um, and I can share more about the process there. Uh, Banner Webb, question about, um registering for more than one FYS, Banner will consider that a conflict and will not allow you to register for multiple FYS sections. So just one FYS Banner will register you. Um, and I see a question about the passport events. Um, so we will have, we do have the list of students who participate in the passport events. Um, so we'll ensure that um, your participation is counted. A question about um, uploading a plan or using the CRN. I would most definitely recommend you use a plan first, put your ideal schedule into a plan, run it through Banner, and anything that you don't get registered for, then rely on entering CRNs for your backups only. It will You will lose valuable seconds if you enter CRNs individually at 7 a.m. Let Banner do the work for you. Are there any other questions before I go back to that registration screen? Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so there is a question that um, was just a follow-up asking um, about letting Banner do the work for you. Um, this is just the recommendation that we're sharing to use the plan um, as your first, first pass at registration, um, because the other option would be entering each CRN separately. Um, so we recognize that that will just inherently take more time because you'd be required to input each five-digit course number um, for each of the courses that you register for. Um, so the plan is kind of the most efficient initial pass at enrolling in courses. Um, and so I see a question here about Endeavor students registering. Um, so Endeavor students do register at the same time as current first year, continuing first year students, um, with the exception of Endeavor students who are Richmond, Oliver Hill, or Bonner scholars or student athletes. Okay, let me share this real quick. I'm okay. Sorry to see what you're sharing. Um, okay. So just a, a question about Well 101. Um, so all Well 101s do fill the Well 101 requirement. Uh, we recognize that they are all special topics courses, um, so they do have different course titles, but each Well 101 will fulfill that requirement. Okay, backing up then to the beginning. This is how you get to registration. 
It's the same way that you get to your plan making. On your student services tab in Banner Web, you want to go to registration, the top student registration menu, student registration and self service. And here you've landed on all the things you need for registration. You need to prepare for it. You need to make sure you don't have any holds. You need to make sure you sign the financial agreement if it's there for you. You're going to plan ahead before registration starts. You can browse classes if you'd like first before you build your plan over here. And then on the morning of registration or in the afternoon of registration, whatever the case may be, this is where you go. You're going to bypass all these other things. You go straight here for register for classes. Choose your term. And because we've already done this, I've already registered, but I would start here with my plan. I added my classes and then I submitted them. Anything I didn't get, I either get a flag that says I can wait list for them or I get a, a note that says it's full, in which case I go to CRNs and I put in my backup for that class. Let's see what else is sitting in there. Seeing a couple of questions, um, just a quick question about Well 101 and Well 102. Um, yes, um, you can take both Well 101 and Well 102 at the same time first semester of sophomore year. And then one question about summer classes. We will have those in Banner in March. Um, I do, though, recommend when you're thinking about potential summer classes and maybe planning out the next couple of semesters, maybe thinking ahead, it never hurts to go back to um, last summer and just view the classes that we offered last summer, just to see what types of courses were out there, just to give you a, a sense for what may come up ahead. And so we just wanted to, again, give another invitation, present another invitation for questions um, before we wrap up this evening's webinar. All right. Well, if we don't have any other questions, we want to thank you again for joining us. Um, hopefully I've answered some of your questions with respect to spring registration. But again, if any questions arise, um, certainly over the next week um, or so as you undertake this process, please don't hesitate to reach out again to your academic advisor or to us in the Academic Advising Resource Center. Um, we're here to support you and wish you all the best with the next stage of registration. So thanks all for coming. Take care.